This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Page 40. Two distinct ways of guiding you with reference to the NCI's goodwill. Don't forget that bit that I told you not to write down. I found out that the NCI attributable goodwill was zero. But it might actually tell you what the goodwill figure is attributable to the NCI. Or you may say it's proportionate. Or you may say the value of the NCI investment is so many dollars. Or you could say the value of the subsidiary shares immediately on acquisition the value of the subsidiary shares was $1.92 each. And we know how many shares the NCI have. They have all the shares that we don't have. So if we own 60%, then they have 40% of the number of shares. And if they're valued at $1.92 each, then we can work out the value of their investment. So there are a variety of ways in which you can give us this information about the value of the NCI investment. We've just looked at the word proportionate, and we've got proportion again in the question Remigius and Elona. We're just reading the top bits of page 40. Two distinct ways of guiding us in the calculation of the NCI investment, or the NCI goodwill. He may say that the parent companies to value the NCI as their proportional share, or proportionate, or on a proportioned basis of the subsidiary's fair valued net assets, or you say it's their fair share, the full value method it's called, their fair share of the subsidiary's net assets. And we just looked at one proportionate example. Remigius and Ilona is another proportional share. So will you do that one? Will you do the Remigius and Ilona?
This Remigius Silona question, the NCI is valued on a proportionate basis. We've got working one, that should now not be a problem for you. Working two, we don't know the value of the NCI. And we don't know that until we can work out the fair value of the subsidiary net assets. So I can't put the figure in until I've done the next bit of the working, which is down here, the fair value of the subsidiary net assets. 32 with the shares, 60 with the retained earnings, so the fair value of the subsidiary net assets was 92. And the NCI want their share of that, their 25% of that, which is 23. So the value of the company is 103. And 103 minus 92, reliably, I can tell you, is actually 11 and not 15. 11, therefore, is the goodwill. And the question tells me there has been no impairment. If there had been an impairment, it would entirely be attributable to the parent company there will be no impairment in the non-controlling interest. Why? Because at acquisition date, they didn't have any goodwill. They were valued on a proportionate basis. And if they don't have any goodwill, then we can't charge them with any goodwill. Working three, per the question, less the pre act therefore post act our share, less our share of the goodwill impaired since acquisition, but there is none. Working four. Value of date of acquisition was 23. Since acquisition, they want their 25% of 38. No goodwill impairment at all, but even if there had been, none would have gone against them because they're proportionately valued. Okay, I'm just going to go back up to working two. This figure of 103,000, we arrived at that by taking the cost of the investment together with the NCI proportion. So if the word proportion or proportional or proportionate is used within the question, then this is the way we have to do it. We have to work out the value of the subsidiary net assets and then give the NCI their proportionate share. If the word proportion is not used and if they're valued therefore on a full value basis, those figures disappear. He will tell us the basis of the value of the NCI investment, or he may actually say goodwill attributable to the NCI was 8,000. He'll tell us the goodwill attributable to the NCI. So they want their proportionate share, 92, of, of 92, which is 23, plus the goodwill which is attributable to them, and that would give us a figure of 31 up there. It's most unlikely. He's not likely to give you the figure for the NCI goodwill. But he might do. In which case, it's an excess over their share, of the, their proportionate share of the fair valued net assets. We know that they are entitled to 23,000 and if they've also got goodwill then that will add on to the 23,000. So that would give me 31,000 as the value of the NCI.
Does that make sense? But that's most unlikely. It's not likely to give us that situation. What he may alternatively do, and you need to read the question very carefully, what he may alternatively do is he actually gives you that figure. He'll actually give you and say the value of the NCI was uh, 26,000. The value of their investment was 26,000. He may just, just say it as cold as that. 26,000, value of the NCI. And that's given us the second line. That makes it 106 minus 92, 14 goodwill. So we can always get to the goodwill figure. The third possibility is the one which is a little bit more awkward. It's not hugely more awkward. But just look at Remigius again. Remigius and Ilona on page 40. How many shares does the NCI own? How many shares does the non-controlling interest own? Hmm? Yeah, so give me the number. Don't give me a percentage. How many do they own? Yes, we do know. We do know. How many shares does the NCI own? Irina? 8, How many? 8,000. 8, there are 32,000 shares in the subsidiary and we own 75% of them. So the non-controlling interest owns the other 25%. They own 8,000 shares. Can we all see where that comes from? Does anyone not see where 8,000 comes from? Ginter. Ginter. Ginter, Ginter. You can't see. Look in the Ilona column. Share capital, 32. Look at working one. We own 75% of that 32. Therefore, the NCI owns 25%. Therefore, they own 8,000 shares. Now, what he may do, what he may do, is he may say that the value of the Ilona shares immediately before acquisition is $3.20. Each share was worth $3.20. Now you can work out how many shares the NCI own. In this one, they own 8,000. And if he said that they were valued at $3.20 each, the value of the NCI investment is 25.6. So the value of the company is 105.6 and the goodwill is 13.6. So go back to the top of page 41. In the previous page, page 40, we had a proportional share of the subsidiary's fair valued net assets. On page 41, he may say that the NCI is valued on a, a full value basis. And he's got different ways in which he can tell us. He can either tell us that goodwill attributable to the NCI is, for instance, 2,000, or the investment was estimated, this figure was estimated at 30,000, or he can give us the basis for calculating that figure. He can give us the, the value per share. 